Hi, welcome to the video where we will introduce the foreign function interface functionality of Choreograph. This will allow you to write Python code and import any Python packages that you may need in your project. To demonstrate this, we will begin by making a project where we will generate a QR code, save the image into an S3 bucket and then return it back to the user. Let's first start by creating a new project. I will name this project QR code. First off, we would have to set up the Lambda container infrastructure which we can easily import from our Lambda container API gateway example. Now we are in the new panel, which we don't need, so we will delete that panel. To use the Python runtime, we would have to insert a special node called the Docker file, link it to our Lambda function and then use a CFN node to specify the configuration options for the image. In the configuration for this project, we will import two Python packages called QR code and pillow. We would also have to include container packages that our Python packages depend on. Let's include libjpeg dev and zlib1gdev. We have finished our Lambda container infrastructure setup. The circuit node that you see right next to the Lambda infrastructure is where the data flows through. Let's enter it. As we enter the Lambda function, we can see that every time a new request is called, the getNextInvocationHttpRequest node will fire, go through the path and when it ends, the Lambda will be able to receive the next request. The point of interest is the Lambda function API gateway handler, which is where we'll put all our logic to create the QR code, save it into an S3 bucket and then return it back to our user. Okay, let's go inside the handler. When we receive a HTTP request, we will cast the contents of our HTTP request from an array of bytes into string. Let's insert our foreign function interface node using the contents of the request as the input. To write the Python code used in this FFI node we can use the arg node to insert the code. The Python code here does the following. We import QR code package. We import the base64 package. We import bytes IO from IO. We create a QR code from the text, which is our input to this function. We create a buffer. We save the image to the buffer in the format of a PNG. Then we base64 encode the buffer value and return the output as a string. To actually call this Python code, we would have to specify what function we would like to call here by using our value node. The value node will constantly push the value through the wire which will act as a constant value in our circuit. The name of our function is called generateQR. Inside the arg node we can see that our function defined as generateQR. Let's name this node using an arg node to be called generateQR. Okay, now that we have called our function let's get the output of this result which we can. Use a detuple node to split the FFI node results into the output string and the status. You can use the status port to do some error. Checking but in this video we will skip that today. To save the image into an S3 bucket we would need. To set up our S3 bucket infrastructure. We will go back up the project to. Set up our S3 bucket infrastructure. We'll use the S3 bucket node to create a bucket. To name this node, let's name it output bucket and then we would have to specify the configuration text here, which will be the type of AWS S3 bucket. Now another thing that needs to be done is to import our S3 bucket on empty stack. Delete pattern because cloud formation will not delete the bucket on stack deletion if there is any remaining items in the bucket. So we would have to include this pattern to delete all the contents of the S3 bucket on stack deletion to solve this problem. Now to use this bucket inside our circuit we would have to add a special node called param in order to link values from outside the circuit we would need another node called a bucket ref to get the resource name from the logical ID. Now to reference this from inside the handler circuit, we would have to do the same thing where we add param node inside the handler. We can finally reference our bucket from inside the circuit.
Now remember that this output is a base64 encoded string so we would have to base64 decode it. Then we will use another node to save the content of this to an S3 bucket called the S3. Put object node where the body would be the FFI node result with We would have to specify the key which is the name of the S3 object. Let's generate a random new UID and then postfix it with a PNG format. Let's attach the key name to the S3 put object request. And then to actually send the HTTP request to AWS, we would have to insert the perform circuit to our project. To use it inside our handler circuit, add a circuit node and Select the perform node that we have just inserted. Attach the perform circuit to the put object node and then to specify which bucket to put the object to, attach our reference to the bucket to the static bucket port. In order to get the URL that links to the QR image we have saved in S3. Instead of putting the object into S3, we get the object from S3 by inserting the get object node. The key specifies what object we would like to get from the bucket, so we would need to use the key generated previously as an input to our node. But to make sure that we only send this request. After the put request is completed, we would have to use a special trick. Insert an echo node and add another parameter. Attach both the perform output and the object key as input so that the object key value is echoed after a response has been received. Make sure we reference our bucket from the perm node. To specify that the response as an image type we would have to use. An optional parameter here using an arg node, which we can set the response content type to image PNG, and then we can set the pre signed expiration to be 3600 seconds. So the URL will only expire after one hour. To send the HTTP request, we will use our special HTTP request to URL node, which has the functionality of this perform as well, but also extracts the URL of the response as a string. Let's connect this together and make sure. To include that we want to use the transport layer security protocol to return the response back to the user using this output here where we can. Assign values using the tuple where the text will be. The output of HTTP request to URL node. And then we would also need to attach some headers to our response. Sorry, it's not an arg node, it's an expression node. Inside the arg node we attach both the status and the content length to the header port. Everything is now constructed and we have successfully returned the URL that links to the image back to the user. If we have done everything successfully, we should be able to compile the project. Very nice. Let's extract the files from our compiled project. Now let's go over to our AWS console. and upload our deployment package to an S3 bucket. From the navigation bar, navigate to the S3 console. I'll put this in Bob US West 1 bucket inside the QR folder. Let's go ahead and delete any old files. 
and then we will upload our new compiled project in our QR folder. After we have uploaded the deployment package, let's head over to CloudFormation Console from the navigation bar. Here we are in the Cloud Formation Console. Make sure that you are in the same region as your S3 bucket. In US West 1, we will create a stack with new resources. Upload the JSON Cloud Formation template file from our compiled project. The CG deployment bucket parameter is the bucket name that we have uploaded our deployment package to, which is called Bob US West 1. Our CG deployment path is the folder where the deployment package is contained in which is called QR. And we can name the ECR repository to be QR code example. Acknowledge that AWS will create resources and submit. Let's wait for the stack to create. Oh, we have to make sure that our deployment bucket has bucket versioning enabled since we are uploading our container image to Elastic Container Registry, or else the cloud formation creation process will get stuck. All right, now that we have successfully created our stack, let's make a request. Head over to the output tab, copy the endpoint of the API. And let's go to Postman to make our request. Change the request type to post and in our body. We'll send our website link as the body. Hopefully the application generates a QR code image. And we have received the QR code. Very nice. 